Diana yeah, tipped us off, at least me. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask, uh, will this move be permanent to Saturdays? Yeah, that's understandable. That's, I will have to see if I can manage, but well. That's all. Damn it. Okay, welcome back. Is there already a now? Did I do it wrong? Just Julius. Thank you, Rob. Can't hear Carl, but you can hear me now, right? People are muted. Oh, if this is muting, I'm just going to fucking give up. If you guys can hear me, just say hi in the comments. Yeah, got you. Thanks, Rob. Um, Welcome. Every Saturday, possibly, from here on in, we're going to be doing Art of Rock at this time. Keep an eye on the daylight savings time of yours, but it's 9 a.m. In, in L.A. Bye. Um, and 12 in New York, and I think 5 p.m. in Berlin. Yeah. Great. Um, and watch it on the Twitch. Bookmark that Twitch. Like that Twitch. Uh, we have got to get through this shit together. Oh, my God. This community, this tribe is going to get us through because we rock. We really do. This is made possible by Angel Spitz Patreon. Boom. Man, I am really not having a fucking good web day today. Angel Spits, Patreon, and for those who are on board, thank you so much. You keep me going, and we are going to keep each other going. And the new track I'm working on... Oh, <laughs> I'm having fun with old synthesizers. Um, Angel Spits' new album, Diesel Priest, is out now. It's actually been out since December, and I have another damn thing coming out soon. And Drake has a thing coming out soon. Uh, I just released my new, uh, the, the album with, uh, Ice Planet 9000. Some of you have, may have got the vinyl. Um, I think the vinyl is, you got it? Oh my God, you got it already? Great. Jesus, that was quick. Bam! I hope you like it, man. Thank you so much, Alex. Yeah. Titsarama, man. And I just put a little note in there as well for you. Um, thanks, man. Anyway, I, uh, Brent, myself, and the team put about two and a half years of work into that project. There is an audio uh, uh, component, an audio book coming, which is going to hold everything together, and it's huge. It's really, really, we are so excited. Here's Brandon. Hold on. I am so not on my, my A game. There are a whole bunch of tracks that I want you to know about, and they're on Spotify right now. Brandon, it's always good to see you. I want you to jump on there and and like those tracks. Listen to those tracks uh, because there are people here and they're awesome. And if you like your music non-stop, 24-hour fantasticness, MTV TV, and we're going to be streaming there after this. And MTV TV is really important to our tribe and our community. Watch some tracks. Jump on. Jump in the, in the chats and talk to people. Like, hey, man, it's... We're a family, and it's 24 hours. MTV TV also have a Patreon because it ain't cheap running a 24-hour non-stop goth industrial thing. And if you've got tracks and if you've got a video, send it to them um, because they're bloody awesome. And this is about our tribe. This is the Out of Rock. Welcome, John. Hit me with that question again. Hey, uh, so last night I went to Buffalo, New York, to the Town Ballroom and saw Gary Newman play, which was absolutely fantastic. Uh, brilliant show. And uh, opening was uh, Tara Bush, also known as uh, I Speak Machine. One person show, uh, you know, up there on stage, massive stage presence. And uh, so I, actually kind of a two part question because it's been a while since I've seen a live show. Um, uh, sorry, live in-person show at a venue. Uh, and so a uh, couple questions I have are, how do you establish stage presence? How do you own 
the, the stage when you're just one person and you're performing and uh, you know there's a certain amount of like press play on things there's a you know there's a part of it where there's the vocal performance but there's also you know you're using synthesizers and other types of instruments how do you maintain that and then the second part of it is lighting uh you know it's like keeping that in sync how to do it yourself how to do it cheap without um entering into absolute hell um so uh, or uh having a uh, light operator three beers in um vaping constantly throughout the uh uh experience which uh, they did a good job and they were mostly on time <laughs> okay this is a great question. I'm going to start with the first one, which has... Oh, Drake, if you want to jump in, you're welcome. Take it. Floor's yours. Yeah, this is something that um, I personally have to address with my performance because I'm a one-person show. Um, I saw Omniflux uh, play with Paul Barker in Toronto um, before I decided to kind of go um, forward with my own live show, and that was vastly inspirational to me. Because I've always kind of felt like, uh, you know, how how do I pull this off as a one person kind of show? And uh, both of them uh, pulled off this amazing performance. And what really struck me in, in the stage presence was uh, phenomenal. But they had this huge screen behind them, um, uh, an LED screen. I got to talk to um, both of them after the show. It's actually an LED screen, like crazy crazy expensive um I've, I've looked up these panels and it's like you'd have to have like close to a hundred thousand dollars kind of thing to invest in in this this amazing visual uh display that they had behind they had actually uh, borrowed it from a friend um for their tour i was like wow that that would be like ideal to have um you know uh, images synced behind and she she um had all of uh her visuals synced using uh uh, Ableton Live. So all of her stuff she was triggering from Ableton Live, the audio and video. So like that in, in like a perfect world, I would have that kind of set up. So I've had to kind of compromise um, to accommodate my own budget. I invested in uh, American DJ hex lights, which are really, really cool. And they'll actually sync to the sound. So it kind of, you know, gives more of a in sync um, cool vibe and you can customize the colors um, for a hundred bucks. I got a controller so I can trigger it on and off and change various parameters right from my desktop as I'm performing. Um, so lighting I think is really important. It kind of gives uh, an extra visual appeal to what's going on. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, controlling these machines and singing at the same time. So, um, I have to try to move around as much as possible and, and give that. Um, so I'm not just standing there, right? It makes it a little more interesting. Mm. But um, a wireless mic is, is really important for my setup too, um, so that I can have more mobility in, in my limited capacity. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's just uh, trying to keep it interesting, you know, um, costume getting into the music, like really feeling the music. Um, yeah, just completely going off as much as I can um, around all of this. So yeah, it, it's something that I'm always uh, looking at new, new kind of ways to make it interesting. Um, I would love to have video synced. If anybody has ideas on syncing video that's kind of budget friendly, I, I'd love to hear about that. Um, that's all I have for now. Thank you. Um, I tell you what, I, I see your hand, Rezzy. What I'm going to do really quickly, there's a few people I've noticed in the um, uh, in the Twitch. Um, if you're in the Twitch, I just put a link up there. That's the uh, link to jo join this Zoom. So you're welcome to jump on in right now. Um, Rezzy, I'll go in after you if that's cool. I'd love to yeah. hear what you have to say. Um, I haven't bought a specific to lighting control and uh, video sync. Um, I haven't bought a, a USB to DMX interface in maybe seven, ten years. And it looks like the market has exploded and there's everything from 17 bucks to about 200 bucks um, to get started with actually designing your light cues from Ableton or Resolume or Isadora or any of these apps that are made for doing show control um, that mostly have free versions 
that are fully functional or aren't that expensive. Um, but you can fire off cues with either um, your MIDI controller or just timed. Um, and it takes things kind of to the next level, ra level rather than uh, uh, allowing for the um, audio reactive control of the lights, which you'll get some cool stuff, but it won't be like blue is for my blue song, fade up slowly for my fade up song, that kind of, you know, uh, intentionally designed lighting uh, events. Um, I, I definitely have thoughts and, and feelings about lighting design and, and, and show control, but also for synchronized video, I think going all the way back to maybe when VNV Nation started touring with projectors was the first time I saw um, start to finish, pretty much the audio was on the DVD instead of you know their backing tracks. So the show was already synchronized to it. The, the video was pre-edited and if anybody knows uh, otherwise, correct my my assumption. Um, but uh, so your backing tracks play from the same thing that the video is playing from, whether that be a, a, a hard drive right now or a USB that you carry around and plug into other people's stuff. But most likely doing your video cues synchronized to audio because they're coming from the same media is way easier and more reliable uh, than trying to do any kind of, you know, uh, synchronization between machines and stuff stuff like that or alternatively using very very non-synced cues which might not be as exciting or interesting to 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 create i think that's what i had to say about those two thank you so if i can just go for a bit i want to bring this right back to you um i don't want to talk about technology because let's just say you have a microphone a shirt and a pair of shorts and a backing track and you need to blow an audience away that's where i want to talk about the first thing you need to do is sit-ups. And you need to do sit-ups six months before you go out. Um, the second thing you need to do is run around the block and get your cardio going. Because if you're dancing and screaming at the same time, that's a lot of work on your cardio and your lungs. And if you're going to be doing that for 45 minutes or an hour, you need to be a motherfucker. Uh, you need to be very, very, very healthy. Psychologically speaking, you need to be sure of yourself. The stage is yours. When you walk onto that stage, you own it. It is your property. The people who are in that room are in your house and you own them. They are yours. If you're having trouble making eye contact with them, look at the exit lights. But you make eye contact. Here's a trick. Um, if you're going to lose your voice at a show, you're going to lose it talking, not singing. Because talking is, is where you're going to, afterwards when you're hanging out with people and meeting people, talking is, is what's going to wreck you. So before the show, when it's not too loud, you've got a, a lolly in your mouth, like a cough lolly or something, keeping all those fluids going. Uh, sugar is good. Sugar free is going to dry you out. And you are standing at the merch table and you are meeting people and talking to them. Hey, man, thanks so much for coming. I really appreciate it. The sooner you get in there and shake their hand and make eye contact with them, they will be on your side because you're on their side. You've just, you've, you, you have established the community that night, and this is important. The reality of the situation is that we will be playing to crews of 30 to 100 people, unless we're doing some crazy Gary Newman show. But... Really, it's 30 to 50 because it's, it is hard, even post-pandemic, making people come out. It's hard. So your job is to shake hands and make eye contact with 20 of them, 30 of them, if you can. People are going to be turning up during your set. Um, you will be high-fiving people on the stage. A thing I love doing is if someone's got their phone close to the stage, I'll take their phone and I'll do the phone with it in their hand, then I'll give it back to them. It's a fun thing. You're going to be doing stuff like that to include them because you're not a one-person band. Everybody is in the band. And the chorus, if you know the lyrics, scream them with me because you're in the band. Um, there's a, a certain amount of mask that you have to wear, a power mask. Um, there is a certain amount of truth and vulnerability. But it's pure power. And it must be positive healing focused power your stance uh, on the, the, the physically the way you stand your chest has to be facing them 
um, your, uh, if someone was to push you, you wouldn't fall over. Move your feet. Um, then there's a whole bunch of, of health related things as well that if you're, if you've got all this stuff, you need a crew to hold it because if you hurt yourself while set up, while doing set up, you're going to, you're going down the road of fuckage. Uh, if you bust your vocals because you're talking too much after doing 10 nights in a row, you're on the road to fuckage. Um, if you get sick and you're partying too hard, you're on the road to fuckage. So here's the reality of a tour such as Gary Newman. It's most likely I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, th this is the way a tour like that would work. I won't get into the buy-on situation because I don't know. Maybe it's not knowing Tara. She's on there for free because they fucking love her. She's part of the family. But um, it's most likely she has no crew because it's most likely that they can afford one bus and there is one bed, one bunk on that bus, and that's yours. It's not crew. It's not keyboard player. It's not your husband. It's nothing. It's just you. Um, therefore, you have no crew. Therefore, whatever gear you bring has to fit in a very small amount of space. So you are basically taking a laptop and maybe a synth. You might not have time for projections and all of that other stuff. Your setup has to be super fast. You have to sound check, set up, sound check on, get off after they have sound checked, then leave room for the opening act. Because the opening act, remember, this is the biggest moment of their life so far. Um, we could then go into the actual realities of, you know, like, you know, Rezzy said, Rezzel said, there's so many, um, I have this really old MIDI uh, to DMX converter. And the funny thing, it's bigger than 19 inch, so it doesn't fit in the rack. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's a Chevelle. Is it a Chevelle? I think it's a Chevelle or it's a Chevelle knockoff. They're all the same. Chauvet. That's it. Um, knockoff. And they're all the same. So um, it takes incoming MIDI notes and it converts them into uh, scenes and it sends that out. So what it's got, it's saying is, it's, okay, scene one, this light red, this light red, this spotlight blue. Scene two, this one green, this one orange, that spotlight. Um, and you might set up a hundred of these things so that when the song's boiling away in the verses and you're firing them with MIDI notes and I found that it can easily do one eighth notes Sometimes it can do 16th notes. Sometimes you'll send it a message and it won't get the message, so I have to send every message twice a 30 second after each other. And this is MIDI, so it's tiny, tiny, tiny information. It's on one MIDI channel, and it's basically about as complex as, as a typical drum loop. And remember, you can only send it one message at a time. You're not saying, turn this light up now, control, you're not doing that. It's, this is the scene, boom. Um, so if you're running, you can't do that off a DVD because, or, a, or, a, you know, what a lot of people do is they'll say, I'm going to take out a, uh, a video component and I'm going to put all of this onto a, um, uh, onto a, it's coming uh, onto a, uh, uh, an MP4 file and I'm just going to play the MP4 file. That's great. But the problem you've got is that MIDI can't sync to that unless the mp4 file is inside your thing so you've got a visual component and then you've got lighting component as well the thing to remember about a visual component is that a lot of bars do not have a projection area so are you taking a sheet around with you are you setting up a sheet you know i've lost count of the amount of times that i've said I, i'm not taking a video out because i have to set up a screen and they go oh no setting up the screen is easy just stick it up and boom 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 no, because what you've just said took about two seconds for you to verbalize. The reality of it is there's a drum kit. There's fire exits. There are fire, if that sheet flammable, there's some states that you cannot put it up unless it's been fire treated. Um, I can go on now and bore you why boom, 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 boom with a staple gun is bullshit. So that's why I personally err away from videos. And the, the, what I will do with videos is I'll have a video front of me and another one front of me there and they're projecting onto me and they're projecting thin lines and stuff that look like scans and stuff that are going on on the stage and the thing to remember that 
if you can't afford a spotlight, get a video. And and within the video that you're uh, playing to, there might be a red dot that's moving over. So my question is, if you've got a really good um, uh, a projector, and nowadays because everything's going high def, all those non-high def projectors are really cheap and they've still got the lumens, um, you've got a, a moving red dot in your video. And then you can have a whole bunch, hey, wow, that's our light show. Because for you to be setting up a, um, a robot cannon to be doing all that stuff in your car before the show, you don't have time to do that. How about you have a stand with the video and the video is always stage left uh, 45 degrees off, shooting across the stage. What's the difference? The audience aren't going to know the difference. They want to see pretty lights. But ultimately, those pretty lights don't matter if you're here, they're doing this to your microphone. Oh, not making eye contact, chest sunken, not strong stance, not including them in the show. That's why I say the most important thing, because let's just say the video goes down, it will. Just say the, the lighting and DMX is going to go down, it will, and your backing track is going to go down, which is why you have the entire backing track on your phone as an MP4. That if it and you hit play on both your computer and your phone at the same time, um, and if if something goes down, you just pull the plug out of your computer, stick it into the phone, and keep going. Um, it's going to go wrong. There's only so much space, and this is what people don't understand. What are you playing a stadium? You're not playing a stadium. You're playing some shit pub out the back that's got a 20 by 50, 20 by 40 room and the stage is in the corner. There isn't even a stage. That's the reality. I'm playing that too unless you're playing with some huge band on a bus. Um, so make it simple. A video, you can, you can put it in a bag this big. The stand... It goes over your shoulder, and also in that bag's going to go your laptop. That might be all you're going to do. Because I want to tell you, somebody playing keyboards is boring. And it doesn't matter. There are a few keyboard players in the world who are exciting to look at. Most of them are boring. And the minute you start playing keys, you're taking your focus off the audience, and you're going here, and it's boring. If you're playing a guitar, you're playing it like this, eyeballing the crowd, unless it's a guitar. I don't care. But the fact of the matter is, your focus to the audience is what your job is. Your um, bringing of rock is you, not the lights, not the video. But of course, that's just what I think. Does anybody else want to jump in right now? Um, and we can gladly talk about technology because it's, let's say we do get those things working. The reality of it is I want to know because, you know, your DMX, that's MIDI. And that has to be MIDI synced to your thing. So you're using Ableton or Cubase or something. And there's timing changes within that 30-minute track. That is a WAV file of every single song in mono. And you are sending... Uh, MIDI data to your DMX. You're probably sending MIDI data to your vocal processing as well. Um, I highly recommend you get a dedicated vocal processor. Um, I highly recommend that your rig has a DI box in it. So you don't have to fuck around with the pub's DIs. So a lot of people don't know this, but when we're not... And you take your own wireless microphone and heads and, um, and in-ears... You spend all of this money on your synthesizers by in-ears. That means that the monitors that are on stage that are screaming at you, you can say, just turn them off. Because I've got in-ears. And no matter what the sound person does, they can't ruin your mix. And let me tell you, it doesn't matter if you are a Buddha of rock. If the sound person is ruining your mix, you're going to suck. Like if they're really ruining it and you're feeding back and all of that stuff, you're going to suck because you're going to get angry. You're going to get angry. Yeah, please, that's why we have in-ears, because it drastically uh, cuts down on the, on the monitor blaring at you. It's all here. That means there's going to be less feedback. There's going to be... And it doesn't matter, babe. I'm in my zone right now. I can't hear you. Just be aware of the volume. Don't go too loud because you're going to hurt your little ears. Um, and if someone talks to you, you can't hear a word. So... Um, 
with all of this stuff comes increased technology and increased connections and connectivity within the software and da 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 and all you need is some dickhead to drop their beer on your laptop which has happened to me on more more times than I can count so have a backup plan and remember you might um, you might just go you know what fuck it I'm gonna do the whole thing on my phone now because my phone is more um, powerful than the laptop I took out five years ago and I'm going to have the whole thing as an mp4 file and I'm going to pull the whole thing off my phone and it's going to be a mono output and the other um, uh, the, the the left side is going to the house the right side is going only to the vocoders or whatever and there's going to be a video file and that video file is only uh, 640 by 480 because that's really all you need and that's going to a projector that's pointing at me and there's my light show Ta-da! and the whole thing fits in a bag Does anybody else? Oh, Alex, I want to hear your thoughts. And your thoughts, baby, you can say, Carl, fuck off. Go. Yeah, um, back to the stage presence. I think it doesn't really solve John's issue because it thinks, uh, I think it's more like on like people available. But a thing you can do if you're an electronic act, you can also um, get dancers. Uh, Schwefelgelb did that. And uh, you think of dancers like in a pop context, but they had like really abstract dancers, which did like really hectic erratic movement it was uh, very alien and i think uh, people don't consider that enough it can i think it can greatly enhance the performance if you can afford them or like if you know someone or whatever uh, and also uh, i've heard of another um, noise act who hired people to uh, dress up like uh, um, like aliens and robots and sports people and that was also part of the performance so i think you can just go crazy if you have the people for it so maybe if you can ask a friend, that's also a fun solution. That's great. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Julius. Yeah. Uh, hi. So what I what I have noticed about uh, being alone on stage in general, no matter the context, musical or acting, is um, you quickly quickly become pretty small because there's so much space, and it's only you. And I think. In such situation, it's important to use the space you have available. You know, like not not only stand in one uh, spot, move around the stage, and use your arms and try to make yourself big. I think that helps a lot. That's brilliant. I can I just really quickly jump in there. One of the greatest props that you have is a mic stand. Um, when you do your show and you're doing the video, remember tell the the lighting people. And I'm assuming it's some shit pub where no one gives a fuck and the lights are, you plug those fucking things in and you're using a video, turn the lights off. Because if the lights are shining on the stage, that means you can't see my projections. Some people don't get that. Just politely remind them. And every time, remember, every time you look at the audio guy in a show, this is what you're going to see. You ready? That's what they're going to see. You're not going to see someone going, I'm watching you twiddling knobs because they don't give a fuck. They're going to be watching their phones. Just a polite reminder. It's just you. That's why you have to be Om Supreme motherfucker. Ivan, go. I love that. Um... Whoa, dude. We got volume going on. Talk to me. How's that? How's that? That's better. That's better. Up a bit. Even more. Okay. Oh, come more. On, up, up, up. I can't hear you. You can give me a couple of thoughts. Minute. Yeah, that'll do. That's great. Go. Okay. Yeah, a couple of thoughts. Um, on the on equipment breaking, it is going to break. It is going to break rando and like you're not going to be able to. You, you can't guess on that. I mean, as soon as you start like having to transfer, transfer your stuff, to, you know, transport your stuff to a, go to practice, you're going to start to, to see how randomly, you know, like Windows or, or Apple is going to software update your stuff or not, or, or lose licensing, you know, just because now you're someplace where the internet is different or not available. Heavy emphasis on not available. Uh, you know, the, the, that's gonna happen. Now power is gonna change. And as a result, now something's not gonna start up. Um, so yeah, keep everything, keep all your stuff on, a different, you know, more reliable 
you know, maybe more boring, but more reliable device. And, you know, as you're, you know, always have a backup. Uh, also, uh, yeah, that be animated on stage. Nothing more boring than, oh, especially these days, nothing more boring than watching somebody go up on stage and they're, they're playing their mouse. They're not even playing a keyboard. We're just mm -hmm. up there clicking on things and, and, and the end game over. That's horrible. Um, so yeah, they, they, use the mic stand. Uh, uh, re remember that the the audience is a you know mountain lion, and you got to get big and scare them away. I like that. Um, and then you know it would be it would be helpful if uh, Ableton were to make a a, a push tar. <laughs> all the all the Ableton users are going, yeah, yeah, and everybody who doesn't use Ableton is going. I don't want to admit that I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. That sounds like a great idea. It sounds a bit sexual, but I, I, it's it's a push controller, but like a guitar, like a guitar. Right? Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, I'm done. Thank you, man. That was great. I want to pick on stuff, but first, here's Drake. Hey. The Thanks so much, Carl. Um, I, I really want to hear more about this uh, in-ear setup. I realize I could look this up, but we're here. Um, yeah, I'm curious to know like how that uh, technically uh, integrates into your setup. Okay. So I use uh, Shure uh, because it's fucking awesome. And um, so ideally what happens is it comes out of a, a mixing desk and the mixing desk sends an auxiliary, just like in a rock and roll pub. However, because the objective of the exercise is we are not charging, uh, we're not trusting the sound person at all, because they don't know your mix. They've never heard your band. You know, it's not fair for them to go, oh yeah, they know my mix. It is. Excuse me. This thing has a loop thing in it, where um, loop is the word they use. It doesn't mean loop. What it means is I can take input a one input coming in on the left side and another input coming in on the right side. This is, it's a different mode it runs in. You can run it in stereo or you can run it in this mode. And I, I don't have the instruction manual in front of me right now, so I can't, but, but anyway, so you could have your vocal coming in on the left and the synths coming in on the right. And I believe it's got a thing where it will then take that and loop it back out to go to the house. Um, so that means um, you don't need a mixing desk and you can give it to the to the sound guy and pray he doesn't they don't fuck up your mix um, uh, I um, and that's what they're going to do so um, and they've thought about all this stuff as well as far as um, uh, um, making the shit work for a one person show um, and it's been really thought of these things are going to cost 500 to 800 bucks but let me be clear, it's your ears. And if you're going to ruin your ears, it's going to be on stage without earplugs. God in heaven, do the show with earplugs. I, I, if, you're, if you're not using in-ears and you're using ear um, monitors, you wear earplugs, both ears. I don't care if you don't feel it. Because when you're 50 and you have tinnitus, you'll fucking feel it then. Wear earplugs. Um, you are dealing with massive quantities of volumes that can ruin your ears. Earplugs. Um, and even the soft ones that cost like a dollar fifty cents, they're fine. They'll knock shit down, you know, twenty five dB. It's funny, I had molded earplugs. These rose. I had molded earplugs and I um I I stopped wearing them because it's like I don't need these things. You know, it's just a whole bunch of bullshit. Um, what was I saying? Uh, oh, yeah. So um, you're also going to want to get a good um, uh, a handheld, a wireless handheld. And that's going to also be, a decent one's going to be 500 bucks. Please remember that the frequencies are always changing. And when you go from one country to the other, the frequencies might not work anymore. I don't understand that shit. Um, don't bother explaining it to me because I just don't fucking get it. Some places they work, some places they don't work. And it's like, oh my god, you go to Europe and it's, oh, we can't use these frequencies now? Why? Anyway. Um, but it's funny, every time that says, oh, you can't use these frequencies, it works. Um, yeah. 
So, um, and, and when I'm talking about this stuff, I'm talking about doing a tour. I, and that might be a three weekend to a three day tour, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night in your immediate area. Um, I, I'm not really, you know, obviously starting in your local, you know, pubs and clubs and speakeasies is a, is a great way to start. Oh my God, it's such a great way to start. Um, so figure out the technology. And if, you, if you're going to do this, if you go, fuck it, I'm doing this shit. Invest in this gear now. Invest in in ears. Invest in all this shit now. Um, as opposed to, I'm going to wait until I'm better. You might not get much better because you can't hear yourself. And if you're going to end up buying it anyway, just fucking buy it. Alex. Did I answer your question, Drake? All right. Thanks, man. Uh, I hope you didn't say that already, but I think many people uh, use a uh, cheap digital mixing desk in order to make their own mixes and then send uh, certain best outputs out to the front of house. And they also have like some sense as their own monitoring. Yeah, for sure. Um, because also, you know, if, you've, if you're taking a laptop, I used to take out an audio card, but it's like, I don't know why I'm bothering doing this anymore. Um, because most places aren't, aren't stereo. They don't care. Um, keep it as simple as you possibly can. If you take out a laptop and you take out a little uh, audio box, like a PreSonus, it's going to break it into two. If it's going to break it into two, just use the headphone output. Um, uh, if it's going to break it into four because you need additional audio, um, sure, do that. Uh, but, um, yeah, so there's... The, the one rule, oh my God, is do not overcomplicate it. Keep it easy. Keep it simple. So, John, back to you about lighting and videos and stage presence go. Or oh, something else. No, this has uh, been massively helpful. And I, I really appreciate all the perspectives. And, uh, you yeah, know, uh, in ears, uh, in particular, and monitoring have been a thing, and I can speak from experience. Uh, I have used keytars, uh, Elisa's Vortex. Uh, it's fine until it isn't. You have to absolutely know it. And if you're in the middle of a gig and something goes wrong with a keytar, and now you're looking down at yourself and you're trying to fuck with it, like that's not great. That was not one of my best gigs. Um, so, like, just. To to Carl's point about like you know keyboard equals uh, is like I've only seen one gig live. I forgot the name of the band. They were opening for Leprous in uh, Petaluma, California, back in probably like 2017, 2018, and it was absolutely. It was the only time I've ever seen a guitar live that wasn't awful. And uh, but unless you're Rick Wakeman, which you're not. Yeah, I, I absolutely hear that. Uh, so on the in-ear system, uh, the sure, you know, is that wireless or is that wired? Like, yeah, because I'm I'm concerned about having an umbilical. Uh, wireless. Yeah, wireless. everything that we're going through, because the, the overarching question is one person on the stage, not a band, not dancers, not nothing, one person. Um, and so uh, wireless is the way to go. Um, and it, it is wireless. And it's got a um, range of like a uh, hundred feet through a brick wall, even. Yeah, I walked around the the house once when I used to live in an apartment. I just walked around just to test it, and it's and same with the microphone. Uh, and and they both worked, and it was a cheap, shitty microphone as well. I don't know, but wireless, yes. Sean, did you want to br bring up anything else there? Okay, thank you, man. No, I I mean, I'll wrap it up. I mean, like based on what I'm hearing is like, uh, you know, it's like a couple parts, like one, don't over overcomplicate uh, your touring uh, setup, especially if you're playing like small, small clubs and bars and pubs and like, you know, some shitty stage somewhere, you know, have a mono mix, have a backup, you know, mix, bounce everything to waves um, and just hit play on both your you know, main system and uh, a phone or something. So if something fucks up, you can, swap it out, you know, relatively seamlessly without, you know, making a big fuss. Um, mono, because don't trust that places are going to be in stereo. Also, that means uh, preview your mono and make sure you're not having phasing problems. Otherwise, that'll not 
be great. Um, so that'll be a thing. Um, uh, lighting, uh, you can do DMX systems, but it's also, you know, more money, more problems, more moving pieces and more stuff to, you know, uh, pick up tear down. So uh, keep it simple. Consider something like a projector set off at a 45 degree offset, you know, off, off stage projected at you. We have them turn off the, you know, the, the house lights. So you are providing video on like, you know, 640 by 480, you know, resolution and, and keep it keep it going. So you have that, you know, with you and that's way more portable. Uh, don't don't bother with screens because of um, uh, boom, 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 variability boom. across places and also fire codes and things like that. Again, like more, more, you know, just, uh, it's, it's more impactful to just have like the lights on you. Uh, but if you're, if you're going to go to that, uh, to the lighting route, uh, look at like USB to, uh, DMX systems and it'll play nice with Ableton, um, which is what I use. Um, and I will not get an Ableton push key tar, even if it exists. <laughs> Thanks man. Um, Ah, uh, Sean. Drake, I might go in after you. Sean, go. Hey, so uh, full disclosure, I haven't done a, um, a completely solo uh, gig, but I think there are some universal things that completely apply to this. And number one, I haven't heard anybody pick up on it, and I think it's maybe probably the most crucial thing um, is practice, rehearse. With all of this stuff, and that's great, you get your perfect ratio of the least amount of things that could possibly break with the best result, and rehearse. And rehearse until you can't stand it anymore. You know it inside out and backwards, if something screws up, you can totally be somewhere else and it's just coming out. Um, it also allows you, to, when you do that, when you put that energy into performing and you're connecting with the crowd you're not trying to remember where you are in the song you're not how many times did i just sing this um all, all of these types of things and then once you've done that video yourself video your show like if it's going to be a show video your show watch it what do you think of it and start to understand where your high points are where those things that where, where you're kind of losing it and you're, you're losing interest in watching yourself. And um, you'll also find, I think, when because this is mostly going to end up being, um, with regard to a, a lot of it as vocals, is that you, you start to fall into ways that you, um, the way that you sing live and the way you bring certain qualities to it. And that's uh, where you get into when you're practicing, you don't want to practice it wrong 50 times. You, you, want, you want to make your practice actually practicing it correctly or making it better. And that was pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Drake, and I'll go after you. Sorry, just trying to find my uh, unmute. Uh, I just wanted to say um, to hopefully save somebody uh, mistake I made. I, I would have bought it anyway, a fog machine. I'm a big fan of fog machines, but then I found out that most venues wouldn't allow me to use it uh, because of fire codes and setting off uh, smoke alarms and that sort of thing. Um, I still use it when I'm doing uh, live streams in the house, but I have to disable all of my smoke detectors <laughs> before I fire that thing up. So just be aware, uh, a lot of venues will not allow it. Thanks. Thanks, man. Also, um, certain fog is... Um it's grease based so it's going to leave a film of stuff and that's going to build up and it goes into the ele electronics some fog juice is also carcinogenic when it gets hit by uv light yes it is research it um so bar um sean i just want to touch on what you said about the importance of rehearsal and that also means rehearsals yeah but also um you need to sing scales or the equivalent of your scales. You need to know how to yell in all those conversations we've had in the past. Um, remember, the star of the show is a muscle here that's that big. Because if that little muscle goes, it all goes. And obviously, in this conversation, we are talking about not bands, just you. There is only you on stage and no one else. And I almost want to throw out a... Um, uh, a 
and the thing, the important thing about you know decision is not uh, uh, ex um, practice is you're not only uh, you're hitting the mark, you're not going over, because when you've got an audience in front of you, you get all excited, and you've got to be careful about how much you drink as well, because with alcohol comes the inability to feel pain, and you're going to start pushing this little muscle, and drunk or not, it's gonna if you're drunk, it's gonna be drying it out and you're not going to be feeling the pain but it's feeling the pain and it's going to let you know about it tomorrow um so um practice the start and know that if you go over you got to bring it down um so yeah rose what you got hey what's going on guys good to see you all again um i just wanted to add uh whatever you're going to be wearing on stage Rehearse in that outfit because, you know, I know a lot of us like wear stuff that's like leather, pleather, whatever, you know, latex. That shit gets hot, guys. And when you're performing and you're like moving, you know, you're going to you're going to start to overheat. You know what I mean? So you need to know exactly what the effect of having whatever outfit it is. You don't have to do every rehearsal with that outfit on. But before the show happens, you must wear absolutely everything that you're going to wear on that stage, including the shoes. You know, don't go, don't get a brand new pair of shoes and not break them in before the show because you're going to have to be hauling all your shit to the club, you know, carrying stuff up and down stairs possibly, you know what I mean? And you're going to have to be dragging things around. Your feet are going to be hurting. You know what I mean? You want to be as comfortable as humanly possible. You want it to be absolutely effortless so that you can focus on giving the best performance that you possibly can that's so important i'm going to say it again give the best performance that you possibly can when you rehearse rehearse standing up do not be sitting at your computer singing at a screen that is not going to prepare you for playing live it's not you're not going to be ready and then when you go, you're going to be like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's, you, you don't want that moment to happen. You want to be like, that's right. I'm ready. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's the feel that you want. You know, you want to be absolutely 100 percent confident because that confidence is going to come across to the audience. They're going to be like, damn, that dude knows what the fuck he's doing. That person knows what the hell they're doing. That girl knows what the hell she's doing. You know what I mean? Whoever. That alien is rocking out so hard, you know? <laughs> so yeah, seriously, like really practice in your stage costume. Think about what it is you want to wear on stage. Don't just go out there in a t-shirt and jeans and stuff. Like that's not cool, man. Like, you know, put a little thought into it. Even if you are going to do a t-shirt and jeans, like if you're like a straight up rock band or whatever like that, and that's like the aesthetic, you know what I mean? Like, think about the colors that you're going to wear. And, you know, think about any anything that you can possibly think about. Try to make the best version of yourself, the fantasy version of yourself. Because you're not really yourself when you're on stage. You're something special. You're something extra. And you need to go for that. You need to, like, explore that and enjoy it, you know? And really just be absolutely 100% sure that everything that you've done, you have done your homework, you've done everything, all the preparations that you're supposed to do in order to put on the best show that you can. I've played for thousands of people. I've played for 10 people. I've played for, like, there was nobody there to see me and it was only the other band, but I put on such a good show that actually I ended up getting four shows after that because all of those bands were so impressed by our performance and they were like, wow, I've never seen you here before because I was playing someplace I'd never played, you know? And they were like, we're gonna bring you back, you know? Oh, we, oh, you know, I'm playing a show in Connecticut. Why don't you come and join us on that show? You know what I mean? You never know who is going to see you and who is going to be affected by what they've seen. So don't ever let anything bum you out to the point, you know, don't build up your expectations so much. If you're a new band, you know, accept the fact that you know, it's not going to be that many people there, but perform as if it's like you're opening for freaking Rammstein or something. You know what I mean? Like perform as if this is like the chance because it is the chance. You never know who's going to be out there 
in that audience you never know who's going to be blown away by what you've done and is like yo you know i'm going to take you on my tour i'm going to do this oh hey i have the next couple of shows you know it's like it, you don't know what it's going to what what doors can possibly open for you and when you let your own lack of confidence hold you back that shuts the door for you you know cuz that comes across to the audience if you're dragging your feet and if you're bummed out that you know you didn't get as many people to the show as you wanted and you let that come out in your face and in your voice and stuff like that that's going to ruin the day for the people that are there because you should be really fucking thankful because you're competing against Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. You know what I mean? You're competing against a lot of really high quality entertainment that that person left the comfort of their home, you know, to come and see you. So regardless of how many people that is, be thankful for them and give them the best fucking show that you can. Absolutely. Hands down, the best. And Fantas practice standing up and in your costume. Super important. Thank you so <laughs> so much i want to pick on three things you just said and remember to tell uh so help me remember shoes makeup clothes sex pistols four things i want to talk about one um be very careful of heels because heels uh get caught in cables um if you are wearing i would recommend that you be going on with either uh doc martin boots um or something similar that are low so you're not going to lose your thing. And if you stand on guitar pedals, cables, da 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 you're not going to fall over. Um, you, because this is, this is combat. It's not fashion. It's beautiful combat. Um, your makeup. Make sure you know what that makeup is going to do when you are sweating and it's running in your eyes. Because after the first show... You will be drenched. It doesn't matter if you are playing in at freezing point open air, but if there are lights on you and you're rocking out after the first song, you're going to be playing in a sauna. So make sure you know what the makeup is going to do when it gets in your eyes because I am allergic to SPF 15 uh, and a lot of this shit's got SPF 15 in it and there's a video of me doing a live stream where I was rocking out and the shit got in my eyes and my eyes were red and it was very funny. Not at all. The last thing is, if you're going to go on tour, um, uh, because this is sort of like, you know, hinting at tour, be aware of the reality of, wow, my clothes are going to stink. What am I going to do? I'm going to a venue and there's no washing. Or if there is washing, the headlining band's getting it. Or if you're staying at someone's house, da 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 da. Do not wear PVC. You think it's really cool? It's not, because when that shit stinks, the sweat interacts with it. Um, because you can't hang it out on a bus. Where are you going to hang your clothes on a bus? You can't. You have to fold everything else, and it's got to go in, a, in, in your little bag that goes at the base of your feet. That's all the room you have. So if you've got wet cotton clothing from sweat, it's going to go in there, and it's going to be putrid after two nights. Trust me on that one. Um, if you're going on a tour, or if you're even if it's a van tour, you can't. You're going to expose. Ask everyone to to hang out your 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 cottons and your and your and your uh, PVC. Come on, don't be a don't be a horrible person. They, they, that's going to kill them. It, 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 the stink is. You don't understand how bad the stink stink is. Here is the trick. Uh, no, don't use synthetic leather. Um, you could use real leather, but my advice is um, latex. Because when you're done, you gently peel that shit off, you hose it the shit down, you pat it down with a towel, talc, and pat, uh, talc it, put it back in its bag and you wear it tomorrow. Um, if, you, if it's cold weather, getting into cold latex is the most horrible thing on earth, but trust me, it will warm up to your body in under a minute because it's thin rubber. And as you sweat in this, it doesn't matter what you wear, you're going to sweat. And it just so happens latex looks amazing doesn't matter what you wear you're going to gush sweat and that's the thing is like on tour a lot of people go I'm gonna wear a big jacket and then as the songs go off I'm peeling all this stuff off but you got to clean that shit you got to store that shit and it's gonna be stinky as hell within a day um, so be aware of the hygiene in the clothes 
latex and it's expensive but my god it's worth it um the sex pistols played a show uh and, and they played to 12 people and i've i've you know i've mentioned this story a few times two of those people went off to form factory records which sh changed the shape of music in Man it was in manchester uh changed the f shape of music in the 80s i think two of them went off to um form joy division or three of them formed Joy Division. Uh, I think The Cure was there or something. The show was a re revolution. Um, no one was there. And, and uh, uh, they, they formed, Mor uh, it was Morrissey. Maybe that was a bad thing. The Smiths. I don't know. But um, no, it was a good thing. Um, but the, the thing about it is Bowie once said, you don't know who you're playing to. So you play. You just rock. I'm going to shut up now. Alex and... Rose, I'm going to drop your hand. Unless you want to keep talking. Alex, go. Yeah, a further question. Um, where do you get quality latex? And how do you decide whether it's quality? Do you just go to your most trusted online fetish store? Or yeah. How do you get it? Um, you can buy you it. Know it's good? You can buy it at a lot of fetish places. And a lot of that stuff is off the shelf. And it's good, so it's going to be cheaper. Um, you can order it. Um... Uh, Renee Mosserman in New York. What's her name? Anyway, th there's there's people around who can make latex to order, um, because you might want to get a, a tank top, and you might want to put your logo on the front of that tank top, and you might want to get a latex kilt or latex pants or something. Um, um, also, the thing about this is the thing is a lot of guys like to play in their jeans, but the thing is that they're the same jeans that you're going to be sleeping in, da 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 and those jeans aren't going to leave your body for, like, probably the whole tour. Um, and that's an issue. Uh, because people don't want to hang around with you after a while. Or maybe no one wants to hang around with everybody because everybody stinks. Be aware that not all... <laughs> Not all venues have changing rooms. Green rooms. In fact, there's a lot of venues I've been to. You're lucky if the toilet door shuts, if it's got a toilet door at all, or if it locks. And remember, when you're getting changed, it's most likely the doors are going to be open and fans are going to be in the building. you got to take all this shit into consideration. Um, yeah, so get it from a, le uh, 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 a latex, a, a fetish store, um, and it's all different sizes. And um, you you get what you pay for. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts, Rose. No, okay. Uh, shoot, what was I gonna say? Damn it, I had something to say. And then I lost. We we're talking about latex. We we're talking. We we're talking about, about latex. We we're talking about we we're makeup. Talking about we we're makeup. talking about the sex pistols. We were talking about. Son of a gun! All right, I'll come back. It'll Whatever. come back. <laughs> um, does anybody else at this stage want to throw in, ask a question, butter, butter, butter? I've heard that with latex, you have to put lube on underneath. Yeah, yeah, you got to put lube on. It looks better if you lube it up. When you store it, um, because it's nice and shiny, when you store it, you step one, you, you hose it down. You can stick it in a sink and just go wash, wash, wash. It's rubber. Wash, 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 wash. No, you don't have to soap it, just water. Um, and then you get a towel and you pat it down with the towel. And then you talc it down. Then you stick it back in a snap lock bag, and there it is. Um, the ability to do that after a show could be problematic, but you're going to figure this stuff out as you go. Um, yeah, and that's... <laughs> yeah. That's why touring with yourself is really hard. You've got to have a... Gotta have a team. When I go out on a tour like this, I would like... I, I try and bring two other bands. So you got the whole package, and everybody is helping each other. Um, everyone's helping each other. And, you know, everybody's watching each other's merch and da-da-da-da-da-da and, and having a, a dedicated merch person, I think's a must. But that's kind of going off the rails a bit, and I want to keep it on this. Rose! I remembered. Okay. Um, you were talking about green rooms and, you know, how a lot Toilet of them don't, <laughs> don't have them, right? So um, bring a light source bring a light source that does not have to be plugged in because a lot of times you're not necessarily going to be able to have access to an outlet necessarily 
So they make a lot of USB char rechargeable lights and stuff, little tap lights and different things like that. Have a light because you're going to need that for a lot of different things. You're going to need a light for your merch table. You're going to need a light for doing your makeup in the back of this gross, dirty club because there's no green room, you know, <laughs> or there's like a really dimly lit bathroom. You know what I mean? And it's like you bring a mirror, bring a good sized mirror. OK, always have this in your kit when you go to play a show, because you do not know if you're going to have a mirror. You know what I mean? How are you going to do? How are you going to look at what you did if, as far as makeup and stuff? If you don't have one. Have a mirror, have a mirror, have one of those little circular ones that comes on a little stand and then you can flip it so that it'll give you a closer view and a further view. You know what I mean? Like if you need to get in like little details or whatever. You know, if you're doing some kind of elaborate thing. But yes, have a mirror, have a light. Super helpful. Have an extension cord. Have an extension cord. A really good extension cord. Not one of those little bullshit, like, two-prong ones. No, I'm talking about a heavy-duty, you know, extension cord just in case. Have a power strip. Power strips will save your life. Write your band's name on said power strip. I also usually will take um, colored tape and put colored tape on the ends in a specific pattern so that that way I know that that's mine. You know what I mean? Because it all looks the same in the dark. You know what I mean? So I get like some day glow tape and I put it in like stripes and stuff and it's like pink and yellow and green. And I'm like, that's mine instantly, easily. I can identify what is my chords and what is somebody else's chords. And you should put those, put that tape on all of your um, plugs into any pedals or whatever, especially if they detach, because it's very easy to lose your plugs and your power sources and stuff like that. It's just, it's just super easy to lose them because they all look the same. So always label your stuff. Label it. Label it. Excellent advice. <laughs> um, also, um, get a utility belt. This is my utility belt. Um, it's got a zip on the inside. When you go on tour, keep the money on you at all times, on your body. This never, ever, 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 ever leaves your body. If you are showering, it goes into the shower with you. I'm serious. Put it in a plastic bag um, and hang it up somewhere where people can't get it. Remember, people can reach into doors like that and grab stuff. But this stays close to you when you shit you leave it on your body. When you rock, you leave it on your body. You sleep. I sleep with this thing. Um, it's got two different torches, small torch and a kind of a large torch. It's got, I think, two knives and uh, multiple pack things like a Swiss Army knife and a cheap Leatherman kind of thing. Um, it's got my visa. It's also got first aid in it. Um, and if anything goes wrong on that stage, it's got a small group of things that can help out with that, like cables and shit like that. Um, and I know exactly where they are, and I can, I can, I can open the zips. I can go in there and do stuff while keeping eye contact. Um, and this thing cost me about 50, 80 bucks or something. Um, get it made of denim, like strong denim. If you find one in leather and you're okay with leather, do that. But um, it's this is the rock belt. And it doesn't have shark repellent, because I know somebody wants to ask me, does it have shark repellent? No. Um, yes. Um, and remember, like, as we go through this, the list gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But the objective is, how do you do this as one person? How do you take the stuff on stage that you can carry this and everything else as one person? Um, and if something is requiring too much stuff, then maybe cut that thing out. This is turning into a thing, uh, an experiment. Uh, I'm losing the uh, work, a process, uh, a challenge. I like this challenge. Because uh, I really have to admit I don't want to play live. I hate playing live. There you go. I said it. I hate playing live. hate it. hate dealing with drunk people. hate dealing with places that aren't going to pay me. I hate dealing with... Um, the logistics of driving. I love playing and I love seeing people. I hate losing money 
Uh, and um, when you're done, I don't have any money, so I can't lose it. So why am I complaining? But I find playing live, yeah, I find it terrifying. It's a terrifyingly daunting thing that it's a risk that is increasingly difficult for me to take. There you go, that was dark, but I'm being honest. Ah, uh, Eric, it's so good to see. Oh, Holland Rose, is your still hand up, or am I good? To, your hand's up? Okay, go. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to add to that, that, hey, it's okay to feel like that, you know? Like, uh, it's not easy to play live. Um, and, uh, you know, I love it. I'm, I'm like, addicted to it. Uh, it it's, there, there's a rush that I get from playing my music in front of people that uh, even circus cannot touch it, you know, and and circus is pretty fucking cool, you know, <laughs> like, but it's still not as cool to me as playing my music in front of people. But that's me. Um, but yes, all of those things are true, especially right now. Gas is really expensive, so that's that's another thing that you have to think about um, uh, as far as like when you're going to play a show. And I think that what you said, Carl, was really important. If there's a band that you get along with in your area, and especially if you're just a one person act, you know, team up with somebody else, you guys could share the driving. And that's a really big deal because you will get freaking tired of driving. You will lose your mind with the sameness of the roads as you continuously drive. You'll get tired of it. So having somebody that you can share your driving with is super 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 helpful super helpful um so think about that forge your you know forge your friendships with other bands bring earplugs that's what i wanted to say bring earplugs to your gig bring enough earplugs for you and you know for any you know if you have a merch person or whatever you know bring extra ones just in case um bring earplugs stay and watch the other band Stay and watch the other band or the other performers, whatever, whoever's, whatever's happening there. You need to dedicate yourself to being there and being supportive because that's how you build a scene. You have to be part of the scene. You know, you have to be participating in it. OK, so you must stay and you must. Yes. As uh, as John said, acknowledge the other bands. Tell them to tip the bartender. Thank the person that booked you. OK. Do all of these things before you get off that stage. Always, always learn and memorize the names of the other performers. It's important and it will stand out. And who knows, maybe that's how you start forging that friendship where you can go on a tour and then you guys can work together to handle all of the expenses that come with touring and handle the driving and handle all of these other things. You know what I mean? Like do it. Learn all the other band's names. Thank Super you. Super important. Um, Eric, I'm going to go in after you. Welcome, Eric. Hello. Hi. Thank you. I, um, it's actually refreshing to hear you say, Carl, that you don't like playing live, because I honestly, I don't like playing live either. And I haven't played live in a while. Um, the, the idea of touring never, ever sounded like a good idea to me. So I never, ever toured. I had chances to, and I was... I didn't want to do it because um, I have such high anxiety and every show that I had to play that like it's a nighttime show. My whole day's shot. Like everything that can go wrong in my head is going to go wrong when I perform live. No matter how much you're prepared in my head, it's just like um, like I'm just worried that it's going to go badly. I'm not going to be able to sing properly. Like something's going to go wrong. And then the whole day I'm worried about that night. And then like once you get on stage and those first notes hit, it's everything goes away. But like leading up to that moment is just like so nerve wracking. And I couldn't imagine going on tour and doing that like night after night after night. I would be a nervous a nervous wreck. So yeah, it's it's actually refreshing to hear you say that, Carl, that somebody else is in that same thing. Um, thanks. Okay. Firstly, thank you. Um if you choose to go with people, make sure you know them. If you go on out with people, make sure you know them. Because um, it's really... I've had the displeasure of getting three shows in. And when you're on a tour, after three shows, it's like, why the fuck are we doing this? This is insane. I want to get out. Stop. Help. Help. I want to get off. 
Actually, after the first night, it's like that. Um, but after like, you know, four or five days, you get your legs and you start figuring out. Um, and it becomes kind of, it, it's actually becomes very, it, it's, it's really wonderful uh, for, uh, after a while, you know, when you've got a team. Make sure that there is no substance drink, uh, abuse in that team. Um, make sure that people know how to handle their substances in that team. I have toured with people who are the most lovely people in the world, um, but uh, they will do everything in their power to not help and set up. It's always, hey, wow, they're not setting up. Where do they go? Uh, and they're not pulling down. And then they get really drunk after the show and they can't deal with it. And it's like, um, I have a nasty habit of firing people in states like Northern Carol, or like um, Nebraska, uh, and saying, find your own way home, bye. Um, but you have to get to a point with me like that. Like, if, like I said, this is combat. And every single person on your team has to be an absolute motherfucker who is not only... Like the concept of that's not my job doesn't exist. Every single thing on the bus, every single thing is your job. Every single thing because someone might break their leg. Someone might be sick. Someone might... Da -da -da, someone might... A relative might die. They might break up with their significant other. And you have to step in. Um, is Rob every single show I've done uh, where I have not walked on stage panicking and freaking out because something has gone totally wrong has sucked um, uh, every 9 out of 10 shows it's like I meticulously plan every single thing up to walking on that stage and it's all itemized and everyone knows what's going on and it's all great but something goes wrong something drama happens so the fucking oh the speakers aren't working something goes wrong every and i'm fixing and fixing and it's like dude you have to go on in two minutes and you walk on stage and it's like i don't know if that problem's fixed but here we go and you're here you're like way up and you gotta bring it down and focus um and it's funny those shows rock because i've got all of this energy so i'm just gonna focus it here so yeah i love playing live but there's Man, I'm I, a day before the show. I'm having nervous breakdowns a month before the show. My body is not processing food a week before the show. I can't eat anymore. Um, I can't. I'm having trouble focus uh, functioning because I'm so nervous, and so I get on the bus and I'm weak. And that's another thing: is if you do go on on the bus, be mindful of your diet. Um, uh, if you can take packed lunches, but that means you have to take an esky. I used to do a thing on the rider where I'd say uh, supply sandwich meats and, and you know salads and stuff. But I'm going to use say a name of a brand. Um, actually, I try not to. Every truck stop you go to probably has a McDonald's, and their salads actually aren't that bad. The you're going to go. Oh, I want burgers and fries. Don't. Because that shit that you're putting into your body that you have to process, salads are going to keep you boom. And you want to be boom. Um, and they're going to just... Yeah. It's all about health, let me tell you. Rose! And welcome, Aussie Rob. It's good to see you. Rob, did you get your package? All right! You haven't opened it yet? Oh, my God. It's so <laughs> huge. I'm ready for an unboxing, Carl. Oh, my God. We're going to do an unboxing. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> I don't well, want let's to. do this. No, I don't let's want do it. This. What if I got your order wrong? Oh, I don't care. Okay, looks like Rob's unboxing it. So we're unboxing it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Absolutely. It's exciting. One. Art of Rock merch. Here we go. Let's see what's inside this box of goodies. All right, I'm nearly there. How's everybody else going? Uh, mine's like, <laughs> it's taken a while. Well, I, I set it out. I don't know what's going on. Ooh, packing material. Wow, look at this. Oh, I'm gonna... Holy crap. What is that? Let me let me just turn off my background because you can't see shit. Background. None. Here we go. Look at all this merch. That's magnificent. 
We've got an Angel Spit Planet, Ice Planet 9000. There's a badge. There's a freaking huge patch. And there's a thank you brochure in there. Going to be looking at that. Holy crap. Look at the size of this album. Oh, wait. There's a bonus. Look at this guy. Black Dog Bite. That is absolutely kick ass, Carl. And the weight of this thing, the fatness. You got to love fatness in an album. There's nothing quite like the fatness of an album. And for my fatness, there's a mega T. Look at that. Now that's a hoodie. Oh, it's a hoodie. It's you a hoodie. I a forgot hoodie. I got the hoodie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I forgot that. Wow. Holy crap. That is amazing. And on the back, that is freaking awesome. That's beautiful. Just in time for the cold winter time over here in <laughs> sunny Florida. <laughs> was, it's like 50 degrees I, over here right now. I was thinking that. Thanks, man. That means a lot. So, That's and, awesome. and I, I, I uh, hold on. My, my, yeah. I, I, once again, I'm just going to say, Brent, uh, B to Z, it was, it was the driving force behind that. And um, Brent is actually the merch guy for several huge um, bands like KMFDM, Ministry, and all of these other bands. And, and this is his project. And I, there's a note. I, I there's a little note there. You know, just that's just for you. That's a little thank you. I hand wrote you thank you. But that meant a lot, man. Thanks a lot. Did it's, you mean to draw your genitals in the card? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Thanks. The I've um got it. the 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 thing is my genitals. Although that's not a drawing. That's actually a photo. Life size. There it is. No, no. That's that's way bigger than they actually are. Uh thank you. We just went there. Um, thanks, man. Thanks a lot, man. That means a lot. Means a lot. I I'm so grateful. Thank you. And I'm working on the the next one. I think I'm allowed to say that. I'm not sure. Yeah, but the um, yeah. Open it up. It's it's. I, I'm gonna put you back on the big screen. Open it up. So interestingly, off the back here, it looks like the. like a transfer that's got all the digital downloads and all the information on it. It's like a computer screen from a spaceship. <laughs> that is absolutely sick. I love that. Who would do that? Not even Pink Floyd would pull that shit. That is amazing. And wait. Whoa, widescreen view. That is a gatefold. And that's uh, the art of Walt Watts, who is brilliant. And I'm dying to see the, uh, the vinyl. Oh, wow. So you open it up and guess who pops out? It's Carl <laughs> in his underwear. <laughs> Look at that. In the deep future. Oh, wow. Oh, and it's signed. Thanks, man. That's awesome. Look at that. Here it comes. <sighs> Holy Batman. That is sensational, dude. Wow. I love the, like, the watercolor finish in the vinyl. That is amazing. It's like swirly. That's really impressive. Thanks, and there's man. Carl. Yeah, it's he's, he's it's not actually Carl, but <laughs> thanks. And it, in the story, it, it becomes apparent who the guy is, but that's another thing. I really appreciate that, man. That means a lot. I'm sort of a bit... Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and that's all on... Uh, you can listen to it for free on Spotify. Um, and uh, But I, it's been mastered. Uh, you can get it on Bandcamp. Uh, you can get the album off Bandcamp. It's been mastered specifically for vinyl. So it's going, the vinyl um, 
everyone who's heard it's super super happy about the sound of it so the mechanics of the vinyl will uh, work with the mastering so it's going to sound it, it's going to sound um, enhanced because it's specific so the digital version you're getting is also for vinyl and it's a decision we made that it was going to be absolutely about the vinyl um, the digital sounds bloody great but the vinyl the vinyl is going to resonate your soul yeah thank you that meant a lot Rob thank you so much thanks uh, um I um you can go back to your normal broadcast oh. <laughs> now that was just an intermission <laughs> that meant a lot mate thanks a lot um, and uh, once again, thank you to Brent. The guy's fucking insane. Brilliantly, wonderfully, astronomically insane. He's great. Uh, was it Alex? Who was talking? You were at the time. Oh, was I? Yeah, okay. you... yeah I interrupted you. No, no, it's all right. I think, I think someone had their hand up and I was going to throw them to the hand and we were talking about rock. Diana, why aren't you jumping in? Alex! Uh, maybe I can just repeat a question uh, that you just asked in chat because I'm also interested. How do you keep cotton clothes fresh during tour? Oh boy, um, you don't. You got to hang them up, um, and you, you got to hang them up. And remember, you're in a bus, or because buses are cut cost like five grand a day for a bus. And the, 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 what it's costing these guys to go out right now in gas, I don't want to know. Because buses run 24-7. They've got to keep the systems going, the air conditioning going, all that shit. They run constantly. So what the fuck is that costing right now? Anyway, um, think about it. You're in a van or a car. And you, may be, you might be going out alone. So that's not a problem because you can stink everything out. You can lay it flat up against the back so it can air out. Um... Or uh, you're out with a bunch of people and you've got a loan of a van or something. The shit's got to hang up. Um, and that's if you're when you go on tour, like the tour that you know we're all going to do, which is crashing it. Don't go to motels. Crash at people's places. It's going to save you hundreds of dollars a day. Um, you will be forward calling them and saying, "Hey, is there a, a washing or like?" You know, do, do you have wash, a washing machine that we can use? Um, that sort of shit's going to be saving you. But remember, um, you're going to sweat on stage. If you're doing your job right, that's me projecting a little bit. Some people don't, but I'm all about rocking out. You know, if you're doing your job right, you're going to sweat. Um, and those clothes, you know, bada boom. So uh, you might take several different changes of jeans with you pack like you're going away for a week but remember space is of the ultimate like i have to fit everything into a bag that's like this by this by this because in a bunk i don't even know if a bunk bed on a bus can take a um uh, uh an overhead luggage i think they're slightly narrower narrower so it's gonna jut out a little bit um yeah um so you've got to minimize what you're taking. You've got to think about all this shit beforehand. That's why you're probably not just going to go on a tour. You're probably going to work your way up by doing weekend tours and maybe a week tour. Da 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 da. -da. Then you're going to go, okay, we're going out for a month. It is fun. I'm getting all excited. Rise, I see your hand. Okay. So um, you can use things like Febreze uh, to freshen up your clothes. Uh, it's, it's, it can be very helpful. Uh, just make sure that you test it out ahead of time to make sure that you do not have a skin allergy because that has happened. Uh, we used Febreze on a bunch of our, we were doing like a bunch of circus shows like in a row and like out of town and all this stuff. And, um, and uh, we used Febreze all the time. So they didn't have the usual Febreze that I usually got. So I grabbed the extra strength Febreze and that formula is different than the regular Febreze I did not know that and my partner had a crazy bad allergy skin reaction so 
make sure that whatever you use, that you use it before you go on your tour and you make sure that you don't have any crazy outlets to it. But Febreze will help. Taking the clothes out and just like letting them air out before you pack them back in will help. Um, one thing that I can recommend to you if you are dead set on wearing like cotton-ish material is you can go to a mountain climbing kind of store. They actually make clothing for mountain climbers and for people that are like that, that are sweat wicking, that will actually like just, you know, evaporate very quickly that are meant to be worn for days and days and days and not get stinky. So there are actually stores like um, Ray, I think, R-E-I. Um, there, there's a bunch of, if you go to any mountain climbing store, they're gonna have a section with, um, with clothing that is specifically, and it's usually like very basic looking and stuff like that, but you can use that as like a part of your outfit that maybe is like underneath the cooler part and that'll, you know, wick the sweat out and stuff like that. And then you can usually, those things dry really quickly. So you can just take a regular old bottle of water that you got at the club anyway. And you can just like, you can just rinse it out real quick. You know what I mean? And it'll dry super, super fast. So that's another thing that you can do if you really want like cottonish type clothes. Okay, that's it. Thank you. All right, two things really quickly. Julius, I saw your hand. Is it still up? It's still up. Um, I'm going to let you go now, but can somebody remind me, isopropyl alcohol and the mountain and, and athletic clothing. Julius, the floor is yours. Okay, so just a very practical question. Um, how do you manage to tour when you have a, a full-time day job? Uh, how so, do you do that? Okay, can I, I'm, I wanna, I'm gonna answer that, but first I just wanna come back to mine. Um, okay, so uh, get a, you know, a spray bottle, put isopropyl alcohol in that spray bottle, spray your clothes down. Um, the isopropyl alcohol is going to make you smell like you've been drinking vodka but it's also gonna kill the bacteria in your clothes that are stinky and it evaporates so very fast. Um, so get the crutch and all those bits, go on in there and, and even turn your jeans inside out and give them a good squirt. The um, moist bits. Yep, and uh, that sort of thing, if you can then hang that up even for minutes, it's gonna help. Um, but realize that I can't handle Febreze and if people do Febreze around me, it's like you can't do that because it's going to fuck with my asthma. Um, the, the, we were talking about latex before. Yeah, I forgot to mention um, athletic clothing is great because it, it looks really cool on you as well uh, and you can screen print onto that or whatever for you know for your own rock and roll or fuck it. Um, athletic clothing, yes. Uh, Julius, uh, in answer to your question, thanks Rob, that hoodie looks great. Um, in answer to your question, it's holiday time. Um, and you might have to, yeah, vacation leave. Um, you're lucky in Germany, you get four weeks. In the in the US, you only get two weeks. Um, and I've been with, you know, people who have taken leave without pay. Um, yeah. But this is the other thing is that when you're building up to your tour, remember it's gonna be Thursday, Friday, and you're doing a short tour, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights. That means you just have to take off a Friday and you leave straight after work on Thursday. You can plan this in such a way that the, the, the gig, the first gig you do is going to be in your hometown. You have all of your clothes and everything ready to pack and everything like that. And either you take it to work, which is ridiculous, or you have to go home, get everything, go back, da da da. You know what I mean? There's solutions around everything. If it starts on a Thursday, you might work work a half day on Thursday. You've got to work around it. Take Friday off. Um, but yeah, it's vacation pay or time without uh, 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 or leave without pay. Uh, I, I'm actually Julius. I see your hand. I want to throw it back to you so you can answer that. Come back to me. Go ahead. Uh, 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 um, so you practically have to align the the the, the dates with the. Uh, venues you're going to play perfectly to have these weekend tours actually am i right yeah you are right but remember um if you're going to go out you're going to be going out with the bigger band and i would highly recommend that you go out with um, um an up-and-coming band who's played mm -hmm. these shows before and wants to set up a weekend date uh, a weekend tour um All right. and you know you might even be trying to get a show at these places beforehand 
it's just a Saturday night show or a Friday night show or a Sunday night show. Interestingly, a lot of goth places are Monday nights because um, uh, the bars are looking for Monday nights are free. It's going to be a cheap night. Um, and the goth industrial crowd, because it's smaller, can only afford the cheap rate. They can't afford a Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Bars go up into an, you know, you have to charge, they're charging a premium rate for you to lease the bar out. They have a, a, a premium drink uh, requirement. And if, if, the, if the club doesn't make that, they have to pay the bar. Ooh. Rose, uh, was there anything else you wanted to ask me about that? So it's baby steps, getting to know people, baby steps. Thank you. No, that really helped. Thank you. Rose. All right. So uh, I just also wanted to add, because you're not going to be able to um, necessarily shower. Uh, one good thing you can do is you can uh, get a gym membership at a popular gym. You know what I mean? One that has lots of locations and lots of places and stuff that has a shower. And that, that way you can get in a shower. Also, you can just use the shower at a friend's house that you're staying at. Um, but if you can't get any of that, here's a trick. Uh, there's these things called bathing wipes. They use them for people with disabilities or elderly people, things like that. And it's basically like a super uh, wet wipe. It's like a like, but it's like the size of like a little towel, you know, like like you know, and and you use it and it'll refresh your whole body and you won't be as stinky, so you won't stink up your clothes as much, you know what I mean? It's it's super helpful, and uh, I've used those on small tours before, and they're very effective. Yeah. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Um, and I, I'm just before I throw to you, Eric, I'm just going to pick up on that. You smell because of bacteria buildup. And you have to take care of that shit. You've got to be on that shit uh, because you do not want bacterial buildup, etc., going on for days. Because you know it stinks, but also we're getting into dangerous territory. Um, uh, yeah. Um, okay, Eric. We're talking about I hygiene. Just... I love the shit we talk about here. Go. Uh, I just wanted to add in. Well, with Julius, what he was asking. Also, even if um, touring isn't maybe an option for you or anything, it's always, uh, I used to play, op like for the weekend, I would have, I would reach out to bands that were touring or actually had some bands find my music and like open up for them just coming through town. So like you wouldn't actually be touring with them or something like that. That's something you could look at as well. Like see what bands coming in, like, oh, this band's touring coming into my area and it's I think I kind of fit reach out to them and be like hey here's here are my songs do you need an opening band for the night and you could maybe hook up some shows like that as well and get some exposure during during free time or weekends or whenever that's excellent and another thing is to get to know the DJs and whoever's putting the clubs on because remember there's clubs and then there's also promoters um, be super nice to promoters because promoters are people who love to lose money and get hated by everyone because they do and just buy them a beer every time you see them at a bar you know um and you know put the soft word in for your band hey when a band's coming through and there's this opening slot i'd really like to do it um da 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 da, -da. um promoters have a rough worst job in this fucking tribe is being a promoter it's awful no one likes you rose i just wanted to add that uh, i did a lot of um, like weekend three day tours like I did tons of those regionally uh, with my old band and what we used to do is you know we'd have uh, we had like a lot of fans in the Boston area because I had a lot of goth friends over there and connections with the goth scene and stuff so um, I would book a show in Boston and then on the way to Boston I would also book like a show in Connecticut a show in Rhode Island and what Carl just said is super important. Be very nice to promoters because they all talk to each other, okay? I literally, I went to um, Connecticut and they were shocked because they were like, oh wow, look, you know, we had a lot of people come here from Rhode Island and from, you know, even some people from Boston and stuff. And I was like, yeah, we have a lot of fans over there. And they were like, yeah, I heard your show there went really well the other day. And I was like, how the fuck did you know that? I didn't even know you knew this guy. 
All of these guys talk to each other. Do not be a dick. Don't start fights with promoters, you know, because uh, they're going to talk to the other promoters and they're going to tell them that you're a band that is difficult to work with. You know, always do your best to be indispensable and to just be somebody that people always want to work with because they know that you're going to promote. They know that you're going to do your very best you know to get heads in the door and they know that you're going to be nice to the other bands they know that you're going to be nice to the people that are attending the event you know and they know you're going to put on a good performance those are all important it, putting on a show someplace is also about you know showing people that you are a team player and that you're going to do a good job and it's super important don't treat it like it, don't be unprofessional and don't treat it like it's like a big game because those people are actually putting their own money on to throw that night it's a it's it's a big risk that they're taking thank you um also um someone remind me free t-shirts and writers um mez i want to throw it to you free t-shirts writers hey so um the whole idea of like booking shows and all that um i understand that it's best to get your foot in with like a weekend tour versus like a, a bigger tour but i'm wondering like how much planning it would take like are we looking at months or like <laughs> yeah um my heart rate's going up right now yeah sorry <laughs> and i also want to know about like getting your foot in the door with like promoters and stuff like where to find them like is it best to find them through other bands or just like look around on facebook or what? okay um i want to i'll circle back to that i wanted to talk about free t-shirts and what was the other thing i wanted to talk about Writers. Uh, writers, yeah. okay. Um, when you do a show, there's a writer. It's a hospitality writer. It's the stuff you want. A trick, a word of advice, make it incredibly small. Make it incredibly easy. Don't go, I want a bottle of vodka. I want a bottle of red wine. Say, maybe a drink ticket if it's okay. Um, because you got to remember, they can't afford it. And technically, this is coming out of your money. They pay for everything, then you get the money. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is I've lost count of the amount of promoters and mixing people who say, oh, can I have a free shirt so I can promote your band? I can promote your band by wearing it at the show. They're not going to. What I always do is I shake them their hand really politely and I have a pack of cool stickers and button badges and I said, look, man, uh, the, the shirts are paying for gas in the car. And I can't get out of that. I'm really sorry, but I have got this other cool stuff. You can have this. Here, please have this. Um, free stuff's great. It's really important. But it's, you know, I see bands give people fucking hoodies. And it's like, and then they put the hoodies on. It's like, they're going to they're, they're gonna wear that to bed from now on, man. Like, they are. Um You've got to be really, you've got to be smart about this shit. There's, a, there's, there's thank you and there's gratitude. But... Sometimes you can't afford to give too much. You can't. Give them pins. Give them stickers. Thank you. Um, that's all I wanted to say. But, Mez, you just asked me about... <sighs> venues and promoters are looking for uh, bands and acts at least three months out. And you might want to start niggling them six months out. Um, the promoter I work with in New York, uh, the, the booking agent, he's four or five months. Um, so... If possible, work with another band. If possible, jump on someone else's back. Because you're not being a parasite. They want capable, good bands to play when other bands are coming through towns. They want it. Um, so if you are good, and if you are all of these things, and, and like Rose said, promoters do talk. Um, hey, I found this. Oh, we're, we're 50 kilometers away. Let's have them too. Um, yes, finding them on Facebook. Um, a, a, a trick is go through and find um, the shows that have gone on, and 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 it's not. Don't look for Gary Newman shows. Look for bands that are in your league or slightly larger who are doing shows. Contact them, and say and make sure that when you contact them, you're ready to rock. Because they might say, "Shit, that's so funny. Uh, the band cancelled, and we need someone this Friday night." 
Um, so be ready to rock. Um, yeah. Was there anything else you wanted to ask us? Did anybody want to put in? Because this is a really good question. Ozzy Rob, I see your hand. Yeah, um, you should be able to find the promoters at the gigs. So, you know, especially after the band performs, they're going to sit around and have a few beers. That's the time you want to get in there and, and ask the ask the manager, hey, who's the promoter? Can you introduce me? And then, you know, get that dialogue happening. And, and we would travel around uh, different cities and go to gigs, buy the merchandise, meet the band, then go network with those other promoters and say, hey, where does your tour go next? And can we synchronize dates in our hometown? And so we would build up a network of promoters by going to all the other gigs. And, you know, that's where you would introduce people. So if you want to grab somebody, like uh, we, we grabbed a band member from our local hometown, we drove them up to another city, bought them a ticket to watch, you know, a, a band, a punk band, and then said, we're going to introduce you to this band. And they go like, oh, my God, that is so cool. And then you introduce them to their promoter. And then you make those connections. And that's gold. And it's so simple. It only takes like 20 seconds to say hello and make that impression. Yeah. Oh, and also, if you play Dungeons and Dragons, I don't know if anyone here plays Dungeons and Dragons, but I'm playing Starfinder now, and I now have the best GM screen ever. <laughs> anyway, that's all from me. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Rose! Okay, so I got a lot of thoughts about this. Uh, first off, don't go on tour uh, if you have not built up your audience in your own town. You start where you live. You start where you live because that is the easiest way for you to succeed is in your actual area. Okay, so you need to get that shit sorted out first and then you can branch out. Um, and the best way to do that is to go to nights. Go to nights, be part of your scene. Like I said earlier, it's super important. Check out and like look at look at how many people are there for certain bands that's how you can decide who you need to align yourself with you know what i mean like be like oh wow this these guys always bring in at least like 20 30 people you know what i mean like that's a pretty good band you know what i mean oh this band is you know like pay attention and see you know act like you are a promoter act like you're trying to host a night right and you're deciding who do you want to book for that night and you find out who in your area is that the one. You know what I mean? And also, really pay attention when there's a local night and you have an out-of-town band because, you know, you can make friends with a band and be like, oh, hey, I've been friends with you on Facebook or whatever, and I saw that you have a show coming up. I'm going to be there, right? So then you go there and you show them, hey, look, I'm so cool. You know, it's like I'm, I'm supporting you when you're in town let's talk let's let's have a show together next time that you're here you know what i mean and you're much more likely to get that show if you've already talked to them and if you're showing your support by actually being there in person at the show there is nothing that beats that there's nothing that beats that there's nothing more legitimate than that all the emails and all the heart emojis in the world do not mean anything compared to actually being there in person at the show and I'm not talking about like a big venue. I'm talking about like your small local goth night. I'm talking about like the, you know, it's like don't start at like the big concert level and think you're going to be able to jump onto a tour with like a, you know, a giant touring band, like, you know, like Birthday Massacre or something. You're not going to start there. You're going to start playing with a band that's a smaller local band or a regional band. That's it. You know what I mean? So focus on that. Focus on your scene and uh, make a lot of friends and See, you know, you should know who are the bands that are in your area that are actually doing the thing. You know what I mean? You should be going out to the nights and you should be seeing what the scene is like and who are like the big players there. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Very true. Uh, when a band comes through and you like the band, buy their damn t-shirt. Because it's going in the fucking truck. It's going in the gas tank. Um, Ivan, and then we're going to wrap this up. Diana, get ready to stream. I mean, Raid. Hit me, I, I, all, I always buy a t-shirt just because I know what that money gets used for. I don't wear the t-shirts. 
because when I'm going out in public, that's not my look. Um, but always buy the T-shirt. I mean, be, be the good guy, uh, which is the other thing. Be the good guy. Uh, like, bring positivity with you, and uh, uh, people react to that. Uh, also, you know, don't spend a lot of time complaining. Be Spend your time solutioning instead. You know, people like people that fix things, not people that complain about things. Um, and my one of my old bosses from you know a contract back in the day. Oh, it, it, it was a highly political company that you know like they were stabbing each other in the back, left and right. Except for my boss, everybody loved him, and he was pulling this like uh, he let me in one day on it one day. And he was pulling this trick where he knew everybody's name. And, you know, a couple of key things about everybody, like what they're best at. And when he would do an introduction between two new people, he would tell, you know, person A, person B's name, and then he would fill in something special about that person so that uh, it would cause everybody to just feel good about him. <laughs> and it works like magic. All right. For sure, man. Thank you. People skills, everything. I see Rose's hand. One more thing, uh, another way to impress a band that you haven't met before, that you want to play with, that you see at your local goth night, whatever, um, pay attention when they're performing and get at least like the title of at least one song and be like, oh, I really like that song blank. That shows that you were actually paying attention, not just a general, oh, you guys rock, blah, blah, blah. Like, when you can actually get specific about at least one song, that really says, oh, you know, even if you can't remember the song, what if you remember the chorus? Oh, you know that song that goes like blah, 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 and then they're like, oh, yeah, that's my favorite song too, blah, 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 thanks so much. You know what I mean? Like, this is my favorite, da, da, da. You know, this was the one that stood out to me. When you actually show people that you care, um, you know, obviously all of us musicians are... Uh, dying for some praise man you know like that's what we live off you know that's why we keep going and why we keep doing the things we do so you know take a take a moment and you know don't be so wrapped up in what somebody can do for you um show a little bit of interest in them and who they are and what they're doing and it will it will always come back to you in a positive way can I just very, very quickly pick up on that? Um, and then I'm going to throw it to you, Eric. Uh, I highly recommend, if you want to impress a band, find out the new album. And tell them that you like the new album better than, than their old album. Find out what their old popular album is and say, hey man, blah, blah, blah albums, it's a classic. But this new album, I love it. I love what you're doing in this new album. Because every fucking band in the fucking world hates going... Ah, oh, I love that song from that album you released 10 years ago. They want to say, man, I love what you're doing now. So, yes, yes, yes. And here's Eric. I wanted to pick up a little bit on what Eileen was saying. Um, if I like a band, especially bands I never heard of that are opening for bands I went to go see, I always pick up their music, their CD or their vinyl or something. And bands I do go to see, uh, I don't... I'm the same way. I'm very minimal with, with clothing and t-shirts. A lot of my stuff is, is gifted to me. And what I'll usually do is like, I don't wear a lot of band t-shirts either and stuff. And if, if I go up to the booth and there's t-shirts, 25 bucks, sometimes I'll just give them the 25 bucks for the shirt and not even take the shirt. Cause to me, I'm not going to wear it and then somebody else can buy it and then they, they can sell it to somebody else and get more money. So I just, I'll literally just donate the money that the t-shirt would cost to the band. But yeah, I, I haven't been out in a while, but yeah, that's what I usually do. Um, I Just really quickly, I saw another band, a known band, and they gave the, the known band a t-shirt. And then the known band stood at the merch store, put it on, and he said, I've been wearing this t-shirt, I want 50 bucks for it. And someone gave him 50 bucks, and he gave the t-shirt to, to the kid and the 50 bucks to the band. And I went, oh, that's great, man. That's great. Uh, Julius, go. Yeah, just one more tiny thing, if we got the time for that. Yeah. Um, you know, in Germany, it's a little bit more difficult 
uh, for a band to produce merch and sell it and more so uh, with CDs. So I was thinking about, I, I didn't have a gig yet, so just, just a consideration. I was thinking about um, offering USB sticks on my so-called merch booth. What do you think about that? I think that's a great idea. Um, did anyone ever do this? Yeah, I did that. Um, okay. And the great thing about USB keys is you can put, you, you get like 200 of them or something. Um, and then as albums develop, you're the best. Thank you, Mark. Um, you put more content on them. So, you know, now the USB has my new album and my old album, da 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 da, -da plus all of this extra content. Um, remember, you can get stuff made in the Czech Republic super free, uh, cheap, and Poland. Um, that when I was there, we were getting stuff manufactured in the Czech Republic and Poland. It was, and it cost nothing to ship it over. Awesome. FYI. Um, although German stuff, when you get it made, it's the best quality in the world. It's going to be printed on the best t-shirt and the, the quality of the print will be the best quality of print you've ever seen, but they're going to be more expensive. Um, so if you're doing a simple, um, another one, awesome. Uh, if you're doing a simple um, thing, uh, a, a simple design, you can uh, uh, get them printed overseas easily. Ozzy Rob, this might be the last word of the day. I'm Rocks. a merch slut. I'm a merch slut. Merch slut. I, if, you, if I buy a t-shirt, I'm going to wear the fucking thing all the time. I'm going to broadcast. I love this band. Like as, as, a, as somebody who goes to concerts, I'm all about the merch. I buy the rings, you know, that, that access badge that I, Ivan's got there with the USB stick on it. Freaking A, man. That, that's the stuff that I want. I want to wear that stuff to work every day. I'm proud of the bands that I go and see. So... It, separate to the promotion deal yeah sure i get it but as a as a, a band junkie i want to buy whatever i can freaking afford i love it that's all good on you mate good on you alex thank you for that rob alex as someone who sometimes buys um cds from touring bands please don't just put low quality mp3s on them if you can uh, put um waves on them and if uh, you have like some restraint on the um, on the storage capacity, just use high quality MP3s. But I'm so, been so disappointed if I bought a CD and it was just low quality MP3s. It's like I don't know, a bit my uh, soul shattering. I used to do a thing on mine where uh, you could have the you know 96k 24-bit files. You could have you know CD quality uh, WAV files full render wave files or uh, one, uh, uh, 320 mp3s um, so Julius that's something to think about as well and that uh, Ivan that card you you know that lanyard that's brilliant um, I have nothing else I want to talk about we're kind of getting close to time so if anybody wants to throw something into the ring quickly or Rose quickly go super quick uh, in the discord I mentioned um the fashion destructo days that we used to have at your place carl and i was saying maybe we'll do an online one if people are interested so i'm bringing it up again if y'all are interested in that this is the time to say you're interested okay, that could be fun okay. that could right? be very fun and <laughs> um also a reminder we're moving to saturday next week we start doing saturdays so it's whatever time remember daylight savings kicked in uh 9 a.m la time on saturday and we're just going to try it because uh, I've got to get the fuck off the internet. It's killing me. Um, uh, Diana, if you're there, we're going to raid on over to MTV TV because your new favorite band is waiting for you at MTV TV. And it is. Um, and I want to thank everybody for coming. It, this has been fantastic. Uh, and, and you guys rock. And, and we're going to fucking rock. That's what we're going to do. Boom. Let's raid. Let's raid. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.